Elevate your hunt with Breton USA's modern AR rifles, where each feature is engineered with precision for the hunter's advantage. Our exclusive Breton Hunt Spec 3 prong approach offers a seamless blend of form and function, transforming the AR rifle into a masterpiece of hunting engineering. With features like marble coat camo and our patent pending receiver lock, every Breton rifle is a beacon of innovation. Achieve unparalleled balance, durability, and accuracy in even the most challenging conditions. Make every shot count with a rifle built on a legacy of hunting mastery. Head over to BrentonUSA.com to transform the way you hunt. Chasing Giants with Don Higgins and Terry Peer. Brought to you by Osseo Camo, nature's most lethal camouflage. Follow along as Don and Terry discuss the techniques, strategies, and dedication needed to harvest one of God's most amazing creations, world-class whitetails. Well, welcome everyone to the Chasing Giants podcast special edition. We've talked about this for a couple weeks. We got our friends from Brenton Firearms on this episode and Don's going to talk in just a little bit. Before he does that, I want to introduce our friends Nick Carpenter and Evans up in the top right-hand corner. You guys uh, have been uh, big supporters of our podcast. We first want to thank you for that. But today, it's a little bit different. Even though this podcast is about getting bucks within 20 yards of where we want to hunt as a bow hunter, a lot of our listeners uh, are gun hunters, and we, we, we love that. Um, there's obviously predator hunting and a lot of applications for firearms. So we wanted to have you guys on and cut to a very a few very important topics that we're going to tease up at the very beginning of this. And that is the caliber fads that are out there, specking out different triggers for what different applications are there, and then also magazines. And I think those are three great topics that can everybody can learn from. But before we get into that and have Nick and Evan talk a little bit about Brenton, Don, I want you to talk a little bit about why a bow hunting podcast and a guy like yourself who hasn't gun hunted in so many years decided to partner with a firearm manufacturer. Well, like you mentioned, Terry, uh, we're, we're trying to appeal to a wide audience, and though I'm strictly a bow hunter today, I'm actually getting ready to shift away from that come the firearm season here in Illinois for the first time because I've got a serious doe problem overpopulation on my farm and I, I need to put the herd on a bunch of does and it's a whole lot easier to do it with a firearm than it is a bow but you know like a lot of hunters I shot my first deer with a firearm and did that for several years until I eventually became strictly a bow hunter. Um, I mentioned I'm going to use the gun again this year to, for some doe um, control but I've also got a couple of grandsons that are getting into deer hunting, and it's a whole lot easier to start a youth with a gun than it is with a bow. So, you know, we're just trying to appeal to everyone. And, you know, most of us deer hunters are also coyote hunters, you know, doing predator control on our farms as well. So, you know, I'm pro-gun, always have been my entire life, and, and I've never, even though I'm strictly a bow hunter, um, I have absolutely nothing against the firearm hunters, I think it's a necessary part of managing a deer herd. So uh, trying to appeal to, to everyone a little bit here. We'll talk a little bit about the quick history and introduce your relationship. We've talked a little bit about this in the past, but we have a lot of new listeners about why Nick Carpenter and Brenton, you guys go way back from uh, other dealings even before he was affiliated with a gun manufacturer. Yeah, so I met Nick, uh, boy, it's been, I'm just going to guess, it, probably 10 years ago, maybe. He held an Close. event. Yeah, he held an event on his farm in Michigan, a QDMA event, and I was the guest speaker at that event. And, you know, I've, through social media and such, uh, I've kind of kept up with Nick, and he, he's a high-quality person. That That's the big thing. We're... We're looking to partner, always have been, with the right people and the right companies. And the right company really boils down to the right people behind that, that brand, whatever it may be. And I've always known Nick to be that kind of person. And when he got into the, the firearm business, manufacturing these Brenton firearms, it was a no-brainer. I had a couple grandsons that were just getting old enough to start going to the deer woods and 
in the home state, of, their home state of Indiana, you know, they can use a rifle as we can now in Illinois. We couldn't until just a year or two ago. And it, it was just a perfect fit as much for the, the people as it was the product. Yeah. So, Nick, talk a little bit about, before we get into these three main topics we want to talk about with calibers, triggers, and magazines, talk a little bit about how you got first involved with Brenton Firearms, and then talk about your main man, Evan, and bringing him on board and what he does for, for your business. Sure. So, I got into Brenton. The first, I bought one. Michigan's a big straight wall cartridge that, when they released that, you know, we were always using slug guns before that. So, when they started with the straight wall stuff, we started looking into how or what we could use. And uh, we kind of settled on the modern hunting rifle there. So I did some research, bought a Brenton, loved it. A few months after that, a friend of mine bought the company. And so then I kind of became more involved with it, helping out, doing some things here and there for him, advertising. And I just fell in love with the whole brand and the whole idea. Um, and then I knew at some point I just wanted to be a part of it or own it. So when the opportunity came, that's what I did. Um, as far as Evan goes, Evan comes from uh, the firearms background. Uh, he's worked in the industry, what, seven, eight years, Evan, somewhere in there? She's going on seven, yeah. Yeah. So he had a really great background, and we were looking for a great sales guy. And he also does our marketing and media, too. So, I mean, he's kind of got five or six paths, if you ask him. But he keeps the wheels going and, and new innovations, things like that, things that we're going to be doing for next year. He, he's he's always constantly looking for that kind of stuff. Um, I never have to guess what we're, we're I guess I do have to guess what we're going to do next. But uh, he's always, he's always got something new for me. Um, he's got choices, right? That's right. We've always got options. We can go to this, this, or this. What do you think? So yeah, he handles that kind of things. And I mean, I just ship him out the door. Yeah. So Evan, you've been with, you've been with Brenton how long now? I just had my one year anniversary the first week of October. Yeah. So Evan, you actually live closer to me in the Cincinnati, Ohio area. You've actually worked at places that I used to do sales calls at. So, I mean, it was a small world when uh, you joined the team and reached out to us after Nick had uh, kind of finalized the agreement with Chasing Giants. So I want to dive into the meat and potatoes of this and, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to open up this, this topic to both of you because I think for the average hunter and people trying to learn whether it's archery or firearms, these fad calibers, and I call them fad, and that means, what I mean by that is not derogatory. It means that they're so niche of caliber. It's not like what we used to grow up with a you know, 243, a 270, and a .30-06. Those were the three rounds that my grandpa had that I knew they were deer rifles, right? Now we get into all of these other specialty rounds, and some of them apply to the black rifle format. Some of them don't. But let's just talk a little bit about the shelf life of some of these newer rounds that come out. What is it being driven by the ammo side? Is it being driven by the firearm side? You guys can just run with that a little bit. I'm curious. Yeah, it's a hundred percent driven by the the ammunition side. I would say that you, if you see the military using it, it'll stick around a lot longer than if it's just the average consumer using it. Um, right. For for example, a new fad is the stick art. Military is using that. That's how it became available for us to use. That's how the need came and the niche came. I can think of a couple right off the top of my head, but Evan, I bet you could think of more that have, have kind of flopped in the last year or two. Um, yeah. Two, or yeah. 224 Valkyrie, I think, is the one that I, I would say flopped pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because there, there's so much crossover. You know, when you have something like a 30-06, if you were so inclined, you could coyote hunt with it. You can deer hunt with it. You can do, it's a, it's a versatile round. But they they find the need for, you know, they want to come out with less recoil. You know, when you get a less recoil, you go to a smaller projectile, then you're trying to push it faster. So there's a lot of calibers that, that tend to cross over. You know, if you look at the 22 projectiles, there's 22 Nosler, there's 223. Uh, you know, both of those have very close similarities. The 224 Valkyrie that Nick just spoke about, that one's been kind of on the way out it never really gone off and running it was proposed to be the the new catch-all varmint caliber 
Um, and now we see the new introduction of 22R, which is essentially 224 Valkyrie rebranded. Um, it does have a different parent case. There is a lot more support and they're working with more barrel manufacturers and more manufacturers in the industry as a whole to make sure there are guns available. You tend to see that a lot also where they, they launch an ammo and there are no guns available. Um, you'll see reloading dies. You'll see parts and components um, for guys to build rifles and to do different things and rebarrel things. But as far as I want to walk into a gun shop and I want to buy a gun that fits this new caliber, you don't really see that, you know, as, as support. But Hornady seems to be doing a better job with the 6 then they did the 22 arc. Now they have a new one that they just announced this week. I think they announced like three or four new ammos this week. So they're they're constantly looking, the ammo manufacturers are looking for new ways to push boundaries. And it tends to be, well, this one can be used here and it does better job than this one. And it's up to the consumer to decide, is this a need that I have? It gives us an excuse to buy a new gun. At the end of the day, you know. Or make a new barrel. Woman with ammo, I'll keep buying new rifles. I, I'm not complaining, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I know uh, I know one of our guys on the Chasing Giants TV team is going to be doing some testing on that 22 arc for you guys with, during coyote season. Our friend Brandon Epperson, who's really gotten into thermal hunting, um, where it's here in Kentucky especially, and he's going to be testing that for you guys. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about a a different project we're working later in the podcast. Let's let's talk a little bit about six millimeter arc because if if you go and Google anything as far as centerfire rifles right now, I don't know if there's more SEO power behind it or it's just the number of people looking for it. Six millimeter arc seems to be getting a whole lot of attention, but I was not aware, Nick, that that is a military round. What did that come from? Yeah, so. In the development of the sixth arc, and I'll probably get it all wrong, but they reached out to us because we, as Hornaday started producing that, they reached out to us, the military did, to see what we were using for mags because they couldn't get their mags to function. Um, and we had figured out a little bit of that, but they're looking at that as their new sniper rifle. So their long distance rifle is what they're planning on using that for. So special forces stuff is what that kind of, what that kind of derives from. And again, as long as they're picking it up, I think that partly why you see so much ammo and availability is because the military is picking that stuff up. Um, yeah, they're not going to bounce around and do something every other year with once right. the military locks in with an RFQ and people start building pieces for those for those bid requests, it's going to stick around. What type of grain is available in that 6 arc? They go from a, like in the 90s to like 109 is is where you're starting to press it because you know, the military, they'll like you just you just spoke about, they, they have an RFQ and it's usually for a round to do a, a certain task or for a firearm to fit an overall footprint. Um, and so with the six arc, you know, they're, they're looking for force multipliers. You know, they're, they're looking to have their guys carry less ammunition, but still have the lethality at distance. And so with that six arc, it is a true thousand yard round for the AR-15 platform so you know speaking the difference between ar-15 to ar-10 you have a, a longer projectile bigger parts usually about a pound and a half to two pounds difference between the two platforms and so they want the lightest overall package Ooh. that they can carry with the most lethality at distance um and the yeah. six arc is is surprisingly one of those ones where it didn't get off the ground running super hard it came out mid-covid it kind of fell on everybody. Nobody really wanted to shut down ammunition lines when ammo shortages, 5.56, five, 9mm, everybody was running the stuff that they knew was in demand and didn't have the, the bandwidth to put up a new caliber. And it seems like in the last year and a half is when that's really started taking off. And it's not only just in the hunting community because it's super effective, super flat shooting, but also a lot of guys that precision shoot, the more tactical guys that like to Reach out long distance, you know, the, the difference of taking an upper off a 5.56 five, and putting on a 6 millimeter arc upper. So they have a lot of cross compatibility. So it, it seems it, there there is definitely probably some SEO power behind it, Terry, but it seems like organically it's touching all the different factions of the, the shooting sports community. And people are finding a way to utilize it um, because it is just a super versatile round. I mean, 109 grain projectile, you're, you're talking being able to reach out and, and 
and take down Whitetail with that. They, they, a lot of people consider it the the two forty three of the AR fifteen or the modern. We, we we like to sure. call it the modern modern hunting rifle or modern sporting right. rifle, but of that platform. So it's it's a way to take a smaller package and still have the same effect. Well, I was just uh, that you 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 read my mind with that because you know think of Don for an example where he wants a versatile, maybe it's just he wants one gun purchased but and have one ammo that, you know, using a two two three on a whitetail, people do it, but it's not it's just not enough horsepower, right? So in Don's case where you'd want to shoot does but you also want a coyote hunt, that would be a really versatile round that's kind of like for would be fine in both environments, right? We've had yep. guys out in Montana taking bear with it. So Holy I mean, cow. It, it, it'll do everything. I mean, obviously those are well-placed shots, but they're still taking 400 yard shots at bear with it out in Montana. So I'm, I'm confident that, you know, mule deer, bear, antelope, I mean, we've shot all of those. So I know it'll do that. I've been impressed well, and with we the all know, all around. We all know in situations like Don has with his grandson's hunting, this style of platform of rifle, you know, low recoil, you know, the way the bolt comes back and it's a gas activated piece of equipment and especially with collapsible buttstocks, getting kids involved with this style of platform is, is a really, really good way to introduce people or especially young people. So I want to, before we move to the next topic, let's, let's talk a little bit about straight wall cartridges because so many of our hunters in Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, are now able to use it. Don mentioned it. It just got changed. What Don two years ago, I believe. This is this will be the third year, I believe. Right. And there's even a new caliber there that I'm going to be testing for you all this year, and that's the 400. So break down. It depends. It's one of those things. that depends on who you talk to, whether people like 350 or 450. If you guys were going to give some ad- advantages, disadvantages of those calibers, and then explain where this new 400 fits in. Yeah, man. Um, I mean, the, <laughs> the, the the easiest way to break it down, and this is this is like at a very basic level. If you think handgun ammunition, you have nine millimeter. Compare that to a, a three fifty legend; it's a three five five projectile. Then you have the four hundred legend, that would be equivalent to like your forty Smith and Wesson, and then you have your four fifty Bushmaster, which we would equate to like a, a forty five ACP. Now they're not all the exact same size, different projectile, but just to kind of break it down on a basic level, 350, you have very flat shooting, smaller projectile, lighter grain weight. You have the 450, which is the king of weight, um, but you're also going to have a different flight pattern, more arcing flight pattern at distance. And then you have your 400 Legends, which fits in the middle. So with each one, um, you know, you gain about going from 450 down to 350, you gain 50 to 75-ish yards of you know shooting ability and when i say shooting ability i mean like easy shooting ability point maximum point blank aim your 450 is really good for those easy shots 175 and in a 400 legend is supposedly we you know we've a lot of testing yet to be done it's still a new caliber that came out but you know you're talking 225 and in and then your 350 legend is 250 275 um you know you can push each one of those out past distance you know with proper shooting technique you know scope if you have a bdc radical things like that uh but the king of 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 weight knockdown power has been the 450 for years um it still kind of dominates he's finding its way in the the dark horse in the ring that nobody really knows about yet because there's one man manufacturer in winchester making the 400 legend with a couple different grain weights but we saw an opportunity to jump into the 400 ring because, as we were talking about with ammo manufacturers, they come out with ammo and there aren't really many guns available. There are a couple different bolt gun manufacturers that have 400 Legend, and there's, to my knowledge, one other company that's manufacturing a, a modern hunting rifle like we produce in the 400 Legend. So we're, we're kind of new to the rodeo, and hopefully guys jump behind the ammo, and, and we're a go-to for that. But we're, we're excited to see what it does. I Don, can say we there. Tr- their, Go ahead. their 400 legend is is probably still going to be a lethal 250 yard gun both the 350 and 450 in my experience are lethal out to 250 um i don't think that 400 is going to pack any more power than your 
than your 450, obviously. But it's for those guys that were having that complaint in the 350 that they weren't getting enough knockdown power or enough, enough blood trail. That's what this is supposed to fix. Um, I get you. But we'll see. You're going to test it. I'm going to test it. I mean, that's that's what this is all about. So, so Don, for as we travel owns- around and go to uh, these trade shows, you know, a lot of times they have gun auctions and different things. And these straight wall cartridges have become a really pivotal tool for gun hunters to use with, with their, with their plans. I know you probably see it a lot with your uh, consulting clients too. Yeah. And you know, one thing I'm curious about, so with a Brenton rifle, could a guy go from 350 to 450 with just a barrel change? Yeah. Just an upper upper receiver swap. Over Nick's left shoulder there, those are all upper receivers of different calibers. So once you have one rifle, which is this one? You just buy, a, buy a secondary upper receiver and you can, I mean, we do 13 different calibers. It's easier to say what we don't do than it is to what we actually <laughs> do. But, you know, if, if you can hunt with it and it's a, a pretty readily available known ammunition, you can buy an upper receiver from us to cover that. Typically, two we could, go ahead. I, I was thinking of the, uh, the deer hunter who maybe has kids that are getting into it. He could have a 350 upper. Sure. You, you know, for his kids and then switch out to 450 or whatever for himself. And we Absolutely. do. I've got, I've got a 350 sitting on that gun there and I've got a 400 or 450 there. It's literally two pins in a magazine. So you have to have your 450 mag and you're just two pins, pull those two pins, put the other one up on it and you're good to go. You'll obviously want to confirm zero just to be I, safe. Absolutely. But nine times out of it and everything, everything mates up. We, we run with extreme tight tolerances between our upper and lower fitment. So from one upper receiver that you buy from us to the next, you're going to get consistency. And that's, that's a big thing. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yep. But Don, you, you've had more recent experience with teaching a young hunter how to shoot, you know, with your grandson Walker. And I know Corey spends a lot of time with him in this, but. You can probably vouch for it. The more we can get a, a kid more comfortable behind the buttstock and not have him flinching, which lends itself to this style rifle so much. Everybody gets scared of it and all the liberals start freaking out about it. But at the end of the day, I still believe a hundred percent and you can you can tell me what you think since you you've been most recently in this in this game. This style of rifle is perfect for low recoil and, and fitting a kid. Yeah, absolutely. Recoil with a a kid getting them started is absolutely the key to keep them keeping them interested. Um, you know, if they're flinching every time they're pulling the trigger, they're probably going to miss more times than they hit and get discouraged. So, especially if they may be wounded animal, so that that low recoil is very important. Yep. All right. Well, he mentioned triggers. Let's move to our second topic, and that is triggers. One of the things that I've, since I've worked with gun manufacturers from the manufacturing side so many years, you you know when somebody puts a lot of money inside the gun, and that's the trigger assembly that comes into it. But at the same time, different applications lend itself for different things. The guy that's doing a three-gun shoot is going to be different than a guy that's deer hunting out of a tree stand. Nick, Evan, walk us through kind of what should be a starting point for somebody looking and they want to do something than just out of a box savage or Mossberg rifle, but they want to look at something that's going to fit them a little bit better. What triggers lend themselves better to what applications when we're talking deer hunters? And that's who most of our listeners are is deer hunters. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a really great question. It's a, it's, it's so multi-tiered because there's so many different directions that you can go. But I know when I'm looking for a trigger myself, predictability um, and consistency is is the number one one driver. You want to know that each time you put your finger on that trigger, the pull is going to be the same. It's going to be consistent break. It's going to be a consistent reset because with you know the types of, of firearms that we're doing, there's there's semi-auto. So as soon as you pull that trigger you're letting your finger go back forward. You've got another round going in there. There is no more recycling of the bolt. So on a bolt gun, your finger comes off the trigger to cycle the rifle again. That's why bolt action rifles 
I mean, Nick and I were just at a trade show. We were, what was that trigger, Nick? Like it was five ounces. Yeah. For a yeah. action. I mean, you can blow on it and essentially set this thing off. And with a bolt action, you're not having to worry about it. So you can go incredibly light. You know, there are trigger, there are competition shooters that go even lighter than five ounces to where it, and, and in certain situations, that becomes unsafe because you're unable to then give your gun to a friend and say, shoot this if they, if they don't really have familiarity with your firearm. So the good spot for deer hunters, again, predictability, consistency. We found that that three and a half pound is the, the perfect spot to do that. That allows the, you to put your finger on the trigger. You don't have to worry about it going off until you want to pull it because three and a half pounds is enough to, you know, poundage where you have to actually work to get it to go off. Uh, but then it's a, I think we lost Nick there, but, um, so it's, it's, you get consistency and, and predictability. So, uh, three and a half pounds is where we found is a good spot. Gloves, you know, cold weather. It, it's just a, a really great spot to be. ICO gear has perfected one of the most innovative camo patterns on the market. The unique camo pattern designed to mimic the feather patterns of one of North America's greatest predators, the great horned owl. Combined with intuitive features, superior comfort, and ultra high quality fabrics give bow hunters the ultimate advantage. ICO has outfitted over 10,000 bow hunters across the country with over a thousand five star reviews. Visit ASIOgear.com to check it out for yourself. Use code CHASINGGIANTS for 15% off. Remington Model 11. Yeah, so it probably, it's hard to tell what pull that, that gun had from when it was originally built, but I think it's a great, huh? (laughs) Don's got a, Don, Don, when he was younger, had a really, really strong finger. Yeah. Yeah. But as Nick, Evan, as guys are on this transition of possibly looking at a more modern rifle, especially in states that's gone from shotgun to straight line. Outside of just saying a three and a half pound trigger, is there something they need to watch for? Because you can go, some of these rifles have been commoditized so much over the years that, you know, you can buy one of these rifles in a class for five, 600 bucks, but you're getting what you're paying for, especially with that trigger. If just take a couple minutes. Is there something folks can look for when they know that they're going with a quality, reliable trigger on a platform like this? Well, it looks like Nick's getting what we're, what we've, we've actually made a change internally, what, what we're going to. So the biggest thing is, you know, obviously a, a reputable manufacturer and they're, 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 they're easy to spot. Um, reviews are great. YouTube there, that's probably one of the number one search things of, you know, what is a good trigger? And coincidentally, with new triggers, and especially, you know, the style that we used, it's a, called a cassette trigger. So it used to be that there was multi-parts, multi-springs. It was a difficult process to change your trigger out. But now it's all a self-contained module. Um, and the drive out two pins, your other one comes out. You're, if you are buying just a, a standard off-the-shelf rifle, it might be one of those triggers that has multiple parts and multiple springs. And it's under spring tension, so... It might be a little bit difficult to get out, but these new ones, they just fall right in. You put the pins back in, and then there's usually tensioning screws that go down to hold the trigger in place. But a reputable manufacturer, we we have elected to go with Trigger Tech. They are extremely well-known in the bolt action world. The the trigger that we were looking at, that was five ounces. It happened to be a Trigger Tech, and they've gotten into the AR, the modern sporting rifle style triggers. And so we've elected to go with them for all the reasons that I mentioned in my first uh, talking points of a trigger. So that's a that's a standard trigger across the whole different lines. And I guess this would probably be a good point if because I'm guessing listeners right now are probably going to the Brenton website and they're seeing three variations of different uh, series of guns: the guide, the scout, and the tracker. Is are all three of those going to have the same trigger in them? All the, the scout, the tracker will have the same trigger. And then the guide rifle will actually have one of those triggers that I, I described, a, a multi-part. The mm-hmm. term is mil spec. It's typically the trigger that's found in a military, you know, style rifle. The difference with ours and our mil spec is that there's actually some polishing that goes into play. We actually use a lighter weight spring. 
So as far as just standard off the shelf triggers, I have a lot of familiarity, Terry and Don with like the AR platform. It is the best out of the box mil spec basic trigger that you can, that you can get in a rifle. When you get into the trigger tech, that's when you start to see a big jump, um, forward and, and you'll understand the the three and a half pounds, the, the reset is completely different, but yeah, so we're pleased to, to start putting these triggers in our rifle. We, we actually got away from doing ours so that your listeners that may have a Brenton rifle or are familiar with us. We are still working through some of the inventory that we have of our Brenton triggers. Still a great trigger, phenomenal trigger. We have just elected to get away from the manufacturing side of it just because it is such an intricate part. Um, it's it, the machine ability, manufacturing it, it's, it's difficult to do. So we have elected to go with something that we believe is, is just as good, if not a little bit better, because that is all trigger tech does is triggers. Those little nuances. When we were asked to build something that was a little bit less expensive, uh, to, to kind of aim for a different market, that's where that guide came from. But like anything we do, we really didn't want to take a lot away from it. So we, we found a few things we could to, to drive that down. But really, the guide series is a great entry rifle. It's what both of my kids shoot. You know, that's what they hunt with. Um, you know, it, it, it comes in one color. Currently, it comes in the gray or what we call midnight. And it comes in a limited caliber options. I'm pretty sure that I don't really know, remember the uh, caliber options, but I bet Evan does. Uh, and then the tracker, the were, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> and the other is an 18 inch or 22 inch barrel. So there's there's those options as well. Um, for the guy that really wants to use a can or a suppressor, we run those 18 inch barrels as well. Yeah. So different price point, different uh, bells and whistles, but same shooting quality and accuracy Absolutely. that you're going to get across the board. All right. Uh, well. <laughs> The biggest thing Don and I don't want to do with this podcast is give out uh, legal advice. <laughs> and uh, the the next segment I want to talk about is magazines. And I'm going to urge people, you need to understand what your state requires. Because I know when we use this platform in Illinois, there's all kinds of communist laws coming down on Don as an Illinois resident when it comes to this style of rifle. That'll get us flagged on YouTube for sure. But um, when we're talking about magazines, uh, you know, I know in Illinois, you basically have to choke this thing down to a single shot and there's a solution for that. But you also have solutions for other states. So without being state specific and saying Michigan is this and Illinois is this, go through some of the options you guys can provide so that consumers understand that no matter what their state law is, you can be compliant. So our mags are made in 10 round bodies and 20 round bodies. And that, those bodies are considered two, two, three bodies. So they can stuff 20 rounds of two, two, three in them, or they can stuff 10 rounds of two, two, three in them. We make limit blocks. So there's a little orange block in the bottom of these mags that limit your rifle to five rounds. I know other states, some states are three, some are one, some are this. For us, five rounds is what we send them out at. Every every mag or every gun you get comes with two mags, so that's what we send our mags out with. And yeah, you're right. Every state is different. We do have a solution for Illinois. If you're traveling to Illinois to hunt, obviously, get a hold of us. We can help you out with that. I think there's a few other ones out east that are the same way. Yeah. Yeah, every, everybody you know, has a little... Speaking a little bit more about it, like the, our magazines, you know, what kind of separates, because a, a consumer can just log on and, and see a magazine as a magazine. We've gone through for all 13 calibers that we do, and we do caliber specific. So when you buy a 450 magazine, it's going to be 450 specific all the way down to 22 Nosler. And we did that by measuring the individual compression and rebound rates of the springs. To make sure, you know, 450 spring is going to be different than a 22 nozzler. The follower is going to be different. That's the plastic piece that the bullet rests on. So we put a lot of time and energy into our magazines to make sure that the end consumer is getting a magazine that's going to feed and cycle the round that they're shooting. And unfortunately, you kind of see that, you know, people buy a, a rifle um, and you expect it to work and the rifle isn't working and they chuck it up that it's the rifle's fault. But Oftentimes, it's it's a, a fifteen dollar magazine that the manufacturer just put in there um, to to run with the gun. So, you know, if anything, if 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 people have already a four fifty or a three fifty or 
six millimeter arc. Those are the three big problem ones out there. Um, and your gun isn't running and cycling ammunition properly. If you give our magazines a shot, it's it's anywhere from like they run from like twenty six ninety nine to twenty nine ninety nine. They could solve that problem for you. Yeah, like, I mean when when we put the money, Don, you can speak to this. When we put the money we do into tree stands, food plots, switchgrass, taking a short change on details like a magazine, it, it could cost you a shot at a buck, right? It's uh, it's amazing how many times we take a shortcut on the easy stuff. And Absolutely. That, uh, the cost of a magazine is nothing. Uh, that's not even a set of batteries in a trail camera. Well, guys, uh, those are the three big topics. But I want, before we hang up here, you know, there's there's obviously been some, uh, you know, hard pivoting and direction with growing Brenton. And, uh, you know, the, we, we wanted to help with Chasing Giants to try to get that out, that word out. What new is coming out as far as the company do you want to talk about? And then we need to talk about where people's going to be able to not only find these rifles, but contact you guys with questions. So from a 30,000 foot view down to a little bit closer, talk about the future of Brenton and where it's going and uh, then where we can find you guys. Sure. So we're going to have some, some new caliber stuff coming through. It's obviously the 22 Arc and 400 Legend are this year big platform pushes. Um, the 22 arc they're in right now and will be ready to ship here shortly. Um, that's our huge announcement for this year was obviously 22 arc, six arc and 400 legend. I guess it was, it was the other one. Um, next year that's man, that's still up in the air, but right now we've got some products that we're, tre we're testing out. We've got some new, we got some new stocks. We've got a few options for handguard options um we've talked about making a few different colors we've talked about making some different camel patterns we're really well like i said when i say that evan comes up with new ideas every week he comes up with new ideas every week um so we've, we've looked at a lot of that stuff we're not 100 percent sure i can tell you with certainty that we're going to come out with a black rifle which we never thought we would do and so i, I know where that's going to be available for the guy that wants to paint his own or do his own stuff with his own gun other than that we're going to be a ton of trade shows this year, all the FAE stuff. We're going to go to Iowa Classic again. I loved that show. That was a great, fun weekend. There's one in Ohio, correct, that we're going to, Evan? I believe, and yeah, the open show. Obviously, we'll be at the Shipshuana <laughs> show again because that's just basically our backyard. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about Shipshuana. You know, the Midwest Sportsman's Classic sponsored by FAE. You guys got to experience that. Talk a little bit about how that show is a little bit different for you. Uh, yeah, you know, we got a we got an unbelievable opportunity coming back again this year with with the uh, the crew that's doing the um, the roundtable. You know, the Wenzel brothers and Bobby Worthington and Al Foster and Don and Joe Miles. From a vendor that walked in there, we're uh, this is this is a shelf selfish plug for the folks there. The people that are still considering being at that show in ships you want to talk a little about your all's experience with it yeah so i mean it, the, the the show in ships you want was it was game changing for me just the, the sense of community the the welcoming of the of the people that were there the engagement this style of questions i i've done trade shows for years been i've been to them all i've been to terrible las vegas to shot show and, and and all of them and i've never had a, an experience with an end user or the the general public like i had in ship Shawana. The, the types of questions the detail oriented questions there was a genuine curiosity to the why i'm usually on guard on my trade shows it's usually well tell me why i need to buy yours over this person's versus going there it was a genuine under wanting to understand the the quality the control and then the people who are behind the business. So I think it speaks to, you know, FAE, the Meg Center, the community around Shipshawana, what they're drawing in, what you guys are doing, you know, tip of the hat to you guys, because you can you can tell the level of care that went into that show, I'd say far and above any other one. So if there's a vendor that's on the fence. I, I, I find it hard to understand why they would be that way. Well, while Nick's while Nick's trying to get his uh, his video feed going back, we're gonna we're gonna talk about something he might not want to release. While the boss is gone, we're gonna talk about a little tease something. Yeah, and that is it's not available for the public, but we are working on a Chasing Giants edition Brenton rifle right now, dipped in Osseo. 
and some of our team members for the show is going to have these this year. And I think, I think you said that mine's actually going to be on display at Ship Suwana. So people are going to see these pieces dipped in Osseo and you never know based on the interest level of uh, people that want it. We could have Brenton rifles dipped in Osseo with uh, maybe even a Chasing Giants logo on it one day. What do you think? I mean, I, I think it would be great. You know, the, the, the Osseo pattern is something, um, you know, I've been around hunting for a while, um, and I was introduced to it when I came home with Breton. Uh, I understand the why behind it. Um, it looks good when it's outlaid on, on fabric, so why not put it on, on a rifle as well? So it is a, a pet project um, that we're working to, to bring to the table. Uh, you know, we're not trying to, what's the adage, tee it up too much for the— tee it up. For the cons- for the end consumers, but you know, it, we would be genuinely interested in, in feedback and the the first place that they'll be on display for the public. Um, aside from you know content that we'll be releasing on social media, likely will be at, at the at the the show in Chipsy. So it'd be pretty cool, you know, to to have people come by and engage the interest, and then maybe we can go down and talk to the Osseo guys and see if we can put something together. But in the meantime, we still have five different color options. We have all of our guns in camo. Nick said we're, we're coming out of the black one. I'm uh, obviously pressing to have some other ones brought to the table as well. So we will have plenty of options in the meantime. So we encourage people to you know check us out. Our rifles are, are found at, at dealers all over the place. Um, so we have the couple shops in the Dutchman's in the Shipshawana area. I don't want to get in too much trouble calling out people and forgetting some, but we're all over Michigan, have several dealers in Ohio, and we're looking to go beyond. So if you have a local gun shop in the area and you want to go in and, and bring us up and ask about us, all they have to do is, is reach out, um, and we'd be happy to get them set up as a dealer. We're really approachable and easy to work with. They'd be dealing with me, so I hope I, hope I come across that way anyway. Don, when we first started Chasing Giants, did you ever think that at one day – We'd be connecting dots with, with people like Brenton and Osseo and then maybe even having our logo on products somewhere. Could you, could you ever believe it's come this far, buddy? I did not see that happening. You know, when good people get together, we, we always try to support each other. And uh, it's, it's not a competition. It's lifting each other up. And we've done that with all our partner companies. And, you know, Brenton fits right into that. So if we can hook them up with Osseo, that's just great for both companies and hey, good for us as well. Yep. Well, Evan, I'm, I learned a lot today and, you know, especially with these, these calibers and triggers and magazines. So thank you guys for coming on before we sign off here. If somebody, whether they want to be a dealer, they got more questions, just if you don't mind, give you guys this contact information and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll connect some uh, potential buyers through the end of this year and at trade show season next year. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, if you remember back to the original podcast, Nick was on about this time last year, maybe a little bit later, but he gave up my personal cell phone number to your listening audience because he couldn't, he didn't have the shop number right there in front of him. So he's like, I've got my sales guy. That was me. So I appreciate all the phone calls, you know, everybody that, that reached out to us. This time I will be giving out our shop numbers, so I apologize to our COO, Brandon. But they can reach us at area code 517-281-2571. Again, it's 517-281-2571. That is our shop number. You can give us a call. We'd be happy to discuss differences in rifles, calibers, you know, different things like that. We can take orders over the phone. If not, we have, uh, you know, sales at Brenton USA. That's that's a great place for people to reach out to. And then for those of your listening audience that are on social media, that's where we're going to be teasing out a lot of our new product releases and, and getting information out very quickly. So we're on Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, so all the major, major social media platforms. But I'm working to build up a YouTube channel of just product information, product spotlights, things like that. So. There he is. He's back. We just we're just finishing up, buddy. Thank goodness. <laughs> I knew somebody would take over while I was robbing my wife of her phone to get this done. All kinds of trade secrets. I promised him the world, Nick. So many new things are coming from Britain. You're going to be so excited. Great. Yeah. Can't wait to hear about it. 
he he just told us that last time you gave out his personal cell number. I didn't realize that. That's pretty I did funny. Too. Totally did. <laughs> he just gave out yours, so now you get that, to answer all the right. calls. It's on Billboard, so we're hey, welcome. You might you might sell a couple roofs while you're at it. You never know. Be perfect. Yeah. So uh, we do appreciate you guys. Um, you know, like I said, so many listeners of our podcast come to us for different reasons. And there's the people that want to be a Don Higgins protege where they get, you know, 191 inch bucks within seven yards and kill them with a bow. But there's a lot of people that come for tips and understanding that hunt different ways. And we, we, we desperately want to try to uh, provide them information like you guys did today. I just told Evan, I learned a lot in this episode and I really appreciate your all's time to do that. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, Don, it's 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 crazy to think. You mentioned it a little bit ago that that good people working together ends up usually with with uh, good outcomes. And obviously, Brenton and all of our partners have really allowed us to stretch our wings and grow this into something much bigger than just you and I complaining about politics every week or uh, we're talking about deer hunting. But at the end of the day, we. We hope that we're a blessing to you, the the guys at Brenton, just like they've been a blessing to us. Absolutely, for sure. It's a partnership that uh, I hope is around for a lot of years. So, well, thanks for being on. Like I said, this was a little bit different. We wanted to go into detail, and that's why it was a special episode. So again, reach out to Brenton directly with any questions. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you guys in uh, Especially on the trade show circuit, Don and I are going to be in Iowa also, so we'll be we'll probably be uh, at the at the same food courts through the winter time, <laughs> eating chicken fingers and uh, and French fries. So look forward we'll to seeing you guys. We appreciate course. you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we're bringing our we're bringing our big booth, so there'll be plenty of room to come by and hang out. We'll definitely do that. Well, guys, thanks for being on. Make sure you check out Brenton's on their social media and on their website. Reach out to him with any questions. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you. We'll catch you next week. Ever had a terrible real estate experience? Average realtors usually spend more time selling themselves than on selling your land. They'll tell you anything to get the listing. They know that if they get the listing, you're stuck with them. Not here. Midwest Land Group has changed the way land is sold and is the only brokerage to offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means if we don't meet your expectations, you can fire us. That puts all the pressure on us to perform. We don't just list land, we sell it. If you're looking to buy or sell property, don't before you talk to us. Visit us at MidwestLandGroup.com.